are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Is your, has your dad recovered from his sleep? Oh, you are sweet. Yeah, he's okay. He's lonely. You know, he's lonely. I think that's the worst thing. He's, he's okay, thank goodness. Right. Yeah. But I, how, I don't know if your parents are elderly, but, you know, he's... um. You know, it's just that I think every day is the same. It's just getting boring. Mm, yeah, I see. Is he online? Yes, he is. He's pretty good, actually. Um, ah. which, yeah, so you know, he's um, got it back in the old days. He worked for IBM, you know, in the in the old days of really big computers that took up a whole room. Wow. Um, so thank goodness he's quite techy, and I think that, that does make a difference. Yeah, totally, totally, yeah. Yeah. Ex- yeah. Oh, that's good, though. That's good that he's, I mean, that he's got the internet and that he's, he's recovering. Um, yeah, I can't imagine being in lockdown without the internet. It'd just be absolute oh, my- torture. It really would. I mean, as much as sometimes you want to turn the wretched thing off, um, yeah. at least it's there as, you know, as, as an option, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And how's your um, online uh, classes going with the academy? Oh, with the uh, school. Yeah, they're okay. I mean, it's they're because they're pretty young. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, they're they're all right actually. They're they're um you know the it, it's a really interesting actually it, it's a really interesting question in terms of motivation. You know, the motivated ones are there on time and they you know want to keep going. Mm. And the ones that want to escape, I've got this little Spanish chap who sends me a message saying, "Hi, Miss, my Wi-Fi is broken." I thought. Yeah, it's lunchtime in Spain. (laughs) (laughs) I can't really blame him either. (laughs) Um, But, you know, in in a way, I I think, you know, you've got to make leeway. It doesn't matter, does it, really? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. And what about the gamers? You said the ones that... Oh, my goodness me. The gamers are exhausted because they're just gaming. (laughs) <laughs> um, so they're they're the most tricky ones, um, and actually, it's the, I was listening to another um, uh, podcast about teaching online, and they were saying how difficult it is when people have their camera off, because mm. if you have your camera on, you know, for a group, obviously you're all engaged, so you're all involved, but once one person turns their camera off, other people are inclined to too, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and then you don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, they say yes once in a while, but then they just disappear. <laughs> Um, so that makes it a bit harder, doesn't it? Yeah, that's just I've seen so many. Like I saw one guy where he took a video of himself taking notes, uh, and then he played that video on his phone, and then he put his phone in front of his laptop computer for the online class. No, yeah, and it just had a picture. So that's genius. <laughs> it's absolutely genius. Yeah, and he oh. was just playing video games, and the teacher just saw the video of him. Of course. Taking notes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Well done him. I mean, you know, that is, I'd, I'd give that guy an award just for, yeah, <laughs> just for, just for the sheer cheek of it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's the difference yeah. between like smart and intelligent. I think, oh, well, it's one interpretation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how, how are the online classes going? Well, um, you may have, uh, I only put on the website that I was going to be doing them. Um, March and April, and yeah. then I re- and then as soon as I realised it was May, I, I this is a yeah I just stopped because I was getting a bit fed up, a little bit burnt out, and a few students quite quite a lot me. of pressure, quite a lot of pressure to do that every day. Yeah, and I realised as well, Daphne, that um, I was, I thought of you actually, but I I realised at first I was just doing the t- whole tutorial, and they were just sat there like couch potatoes. So after mm. like so after three. Um, sort of like tutorials like this I was like stuff this I'm not doing this anymore I'm just gonna... yeah they should be working not you exactly so I just started dividing like if there's I don't know it's 10 people on the call I divided it into teams of five. Oh, nice one so team one has to write the introduction team two has to think of ideas brilliant and then yeah as soon as I started doing that it got a bit easier and I just sort yeah. of like shifted the workload onto them because they were just sitting there like it was YouTube just passively yeah. enjoying it and I was like okay this is going to burn me out yeah. and second they're not doing anything and they're not benefiting so I was yeah. like okay and I called them out I was like look you're not get joining this class and doing nothing you're gonna yeah, have well to done. and I was like Shanti what's your answer here uh, yeah 
uh, Amandeep, what what have you got? Tell me. And if there's silence, I'll be like, okay, to Amandeep, I'll give you a few more minutes, then I'm coming back to you. Nice blah, blah, one. Blah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it um, it was just better for everybody. Like and I bet, they, I bet that they enjoyed that more too, because you know I find that on on the on the classes where I'm thinking, right, Carl, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Which is how it should be student led, really, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and I think if we can just orchestrate that kind of environment, I think it's uh, yeah, it's more productive for both well, the exactly, student and exactly. the teacher. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I haven't decided whether I'm going to continue with them yet. I've kind of put them on pause and left the students asking. I took down the notice that they there are online classes available. I might put mm. it up. I haven't decided yet. I've just got a few other ideas of projects in my mind. But one thing I was going to suggest to you, Daphne, um, mm. is making this a routine. So every Monday we jump online and we do two or three podcasts from mm -hmm. the content that has already been developed um, and probably, I don't know, scheduled or planned uh, via can. Uh, by Candice and then we yep. jump online so it's kind of uh, a routine thing so we can just basically get a big stockpile of podcasts uh, so we can keep running through good, Christmas. Good opportunity yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. How do you feel? Do you think you'd be no, able I'm to very, do that? very happy to do that as long as you give me the content before so I can just kind of get um, you know the like at the moment I've just got for the formal letter I've just got those fixed phrases that I want to be able to to say so as long as I know what we're going to talk about then of course it's absolutely fine okay yes. super super mm. all right well I'll I'm going to talk with Candice later today so I'll suggest that to her and Lovely. I, th I think she'll like that because she wants to get her hands on the content content plan for SEO and stuff like this and I keep what I'm what I'm um I haven't got it yet but hopefully by the end of this week I want to get the you know we were talking about the challenge exercises for the speaking course right I want to get a list of about 10 maybe or even 12 mm -hmm. challenges that we can have um I want to print them all out you know get them all into a PDF sort of thing, so I know what challenges I want to send to people in which order, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, if they engage with that, but that might be something later on that we can talk about various issues of the speaking or something as well. Ah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, we could maybe include it into um, the the podcast. Yeah, not 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 quite yet, but you know, have it on your list maybe. Okay, definitely, definitely, yeah, lovely. Um, I would suggest just maybe go for six. Okay, because six challenges. Okay, perfect. Or, or, or even three, um, because I don't want you to make um, a whole 12 challenges and we're not getting that many students uh, by, okay. you know? Okay, good point. Yep. So we'll best just uh, just seeing, like, if they keep uh, biting. I know you sent a message about promotion and I've got to check that out. Um, but, yeah, ju so just in case, sort of like go a yep. little bit more cautiously rather than... Um, oh, it, it wasn't, sorry, sorry, it wasn't, um, it was, it was, um, I think it was, a lot of people didn't see your first email about it. Right. And then Candice put it in a canned response, but the canned response literally says, buy it here, but doesn't tell them what it is. Oh. So all I wanted to do was to see if we could expand that canned response to say, whoa, this is a new fantastic thing we're doing. Um, and this is how it works. Right. Oh, okay, okay. What I'll do is um, I'll just make so it a was, note. It was, it was so that literally I can, and maybe Ellen as well, if she's happy to, just put that into every correction for the next week or so, ah. um, just to give everyone the opportunity to get involved if they want to. Ah, okay. Let me just, um, so let's see. Add so we're just expanding the can response. Um, can't, okay, gotcha. Can response about speaking. Uh, feedback you just service. Just explanation, yeah. What it because otherwise, otherwise it just says buy it here, and they don't know what it is. Gotcha, gotcha. Now this is a great idea because the ones who are receiving the um, the canned responses, the from Fresh Desk, are the ones who are actively preparing. Exactly. And exactly. The, and I think yeah. hopefully that will suddenly blow up and get massively busy when the the exam centres reopen. Yeah, super, super idea. Okay, um, I've made a note of that. And Thanks, super. Okay. Um, today, what I'd like to do, I know I said we'll do um, three podcasts, including the formal letter. Mm -hmm. I, I realized uh, this morning that I I messed up and I recorded the formal letter on my own oh, cool. at the weekend. That's fine. It's not very long anyway, that one. Yeah, fine. Okay. Good. So, but I did look at the how to plan 
academic task one and I thought wow this is long maybe it can yeah. be stretched into uh two podcasts part one part two mm-hmm. um um so yeah I what I thought for this one is um, I think Ben sorry just just a quick one on there mm-hmm. um where I would split it is it, it only looks long because there's rather a lot of rather black writing in there isn't there um mm. I think you could you could do the planning and get ready go Mm -hmm. Um, You can do it up to there. Right. So up to where it has the graph, basically. I don't know if you want to talk about the graph. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Okay. But then I I was thinking as well, I think it might be nice to do another. The part two might be using checklists. Beautiful. Um, Beautiful. Because if you see on page, the second to last page, there is a 15 point checklist. That's quite cool. Yeah, definitely. I I thought similar actually. I thought, well, that's an episode in itself. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Because actually, it's it's all about editing those last few minutes, you know, mm-hmm. to check the stupid mistakes that you've made. <laughs> um, so maybe we should do the second part. Should be just using checklists. Beautiful. Definitely up for that. Yeah. Okay. So we can Good. do three today, roughly mm-hmm. around twenty thirty minutes each. Yep. We'll do. Number one, how to plan academic task one. Then the yep. second part um, is just going to be how to use checklists for yep. for AT, uh, academic task AT1. And then, that refers back to the one we just done, yeah. Uh-huh. And then essentials to writing a successful writing task two. Yes, this uh-huh. is about the process. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, one, actually, no, I'll, I'll just mention that once. Yes. Uh, one thing I was going to say with this one is that it doesn't match exactly what we say in the sentence guide. So what we'll have to do is just sort of like say, look, this is a technique. OK, uh, there are lots of different techniques. You've got to choose your own technique. Try this one if it works for you. What we teach in the sentence guide is slightly different. Um, but, you know, if there were yes. a single I mean, way to do was- it. When gotcha. I was writing notes, I thought we could link it. We could link it in the fact that the um, using the the twelve sentence guide or the template is part of the process in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so that the process they're talking about is having a system. So you've got a system. Mm-hmm. The system that you've got is the twelve sentence guide. Exactly. Um, so I thought it's not it's not that far away. And I thought maybe um, I mean I've written down the system, the processes of understanding the stages in the writing and improving your coherence through the through the sentence guide is part of that process gotcha gotcha so I, i'll try i'll try and link it in i think it's worth a try absolutely absolutely okay, okay. shall we start with that one yeah, first yeah. um yeah. and then we'll do the academic ones also okay. oh, sorry um, which one are we starting where are we starting ben how to write an ielts essay how to do. yeah cool. yeah and yeah uh, let's see now. Yeah, one thing, just to make it um, easier to edit and quicker to edit, mm-hmm. um, if we kind of do it with the attitude of it being live, you know, and if we both sort of like approach it with the thing of like, oh, can you edit that out? Uh, of avoiding saying phrases like, oh, can we edit that out? Because then it's just a little smoother and easier for us. For, oh, no, for I'll, I'll go totally pro. I won't say anything. <laughs> So, so okay, don't, don't, yeah, I mean, like, like it, 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 is, it is totally, it is live, but I'm terrified. Go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just check it for a recording. All right, yep, it's been recording, and I'll just check if the other one is recording too. Yeah, okay. So, I'll do a countdown, and then we'll jump in. Uh, three, two, one. Hello there IELTS students. In this tutorial, Daphne and myself will be focusing on how to write an IELTS essay. How are you doing this morning, Daphne? I'm great, thanks Ben. Doing really, really well. Hope you are too. Yes, yes, I'm doing great. Cheers. Okay, so can you give us an outline about what we will be covering and learning in this tutorial, please? Yeah, absolutely. So today, everybody, we are going to be looking at how to write a really good task two academic essay. 
And the way we're going to do it is by looking at this essay like a process or a system. So rather than just looking at the title and panicking and writing, we're just going to go through quite methodically the whole start to finish process, looking at the different stages and explaining to you why we think this is really, really important. Beautiful, beautiful. Right then. Now, there isn't a, although there isn't a magic formula, um, this sounds kind of contradictory, maybe a little bit <laughs> <laughs> controversial, but although there isn't a magic formula, I think we did come relatively reasonably close with the sentence guide, but let me just qualify that. Um, it's not really a formula we've got in the sentence guide, it's more of a system. And even then, there is still work to be done, i.e. getting feedback and working on your own grammar and your own vocabulary. And we can give you help in that, in that area, just like we can give you feedback, uh, just like we can give you the system for writing essays. And what we're doing here is, is similar to what we're doing in the sentence guide, except with the sentence guide, it's a little bit more hands-on and it's broken down a little bit more granular um, because we've got the luxury of having the tutorials, of having a screen and you're watching it, and then you're doing the exercises, sending them in. Whereas in this, this is kind of, uh, in this episode or this podcast, in this tutorial, it's more of an overview of a similar process. Yeah, ex exactly, Ben. I think you're right. And I think you know, that the, the, the ideas between the two things for me actually link up because I think having a process, I think if you step back from your writing in a way, it's, for me, this is, you have to kind of, you have to think and part of the process is actually thinking. Um, you have to understand what you're doing. You're given a title. You have to understand the whole process of the brainstorming and uh, the planning. We'll go into this in more detail, but it's how you get from step to step to step. And the course that we offer, especially with the 12 sentence guide, takes you through the steps of getting your essay as best as it can possibly be to get the grade you want. So we take you through, as Ben says, this whole idea of writing and feedback, giving you the chance to improve. That's a process as well. It's I think it's understanding that it takes time, but also you need to complete each step of the process mm -hmm. in order to get the best result. There uh, aren't any shortcuts on this, I'm afraid. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I find uh, a lot of students get frustrated because it just seems so overwhelming. And I know so many students will just read a question and then they're like, ah, my mind goes blank. Or they get a nuclear bomb explosion of ideas and they don't know where to start. And with a process, when it's broken down into the smallest components, and then each, and then the student is given the opportunity to master each of those components, it becomes infinitely much more easier, uh, infinitely easier, more straightforward, and it's just a, a radical improvement, uh, boosting are, confidence. Yeah, Ben, you are so right. And literally, you'll love because step one of the process is read the question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Can you elaborate more on this one, please? Yeah, let, let's go through this. So this is before you even start to write. You didn't uh, is literally step one, read the question and understand what the examiner is asking. Now, that in itself has two parts to it. Read the question number one. And this gives me a flashback. This makes me think back to my childhood because my father uh, made us work very hard when we were children. There was, you know, there were, there were no excuses for bad grades. Uh, but when we were doing an exam, he always used to say to us, rule number zero, read the question. And that has stuck in my mind for the rest of my life. And I say to my students now, read the question, rule number zero, read the question. Wow. Uh, because it's easy to see a few words in the question. You might see the word uh, pollution, or you might see the word environmental problem, or you might see the word loneliness. And you think, oh, great, okay, off I go. Mm. But that would be a fatal error. 
Absolutely, absolutely. It just reminded me actually when I was working with my dad, we used to work uh, in the shop because we have a supermarket back home in England and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't question zero. It was just every 10 minutes. Are you winning? Are you winning, son? Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. But also just as a side note, it used to drive me crazy working there because it was all about communication and um the instructions were like put that over there under the other ones and it used to drive me absolutely crazy because i had no idea what was what was going on but anyway so yeah um definitely so, so yeah let, so yeah read so read to so read the question and understand what the examiner is asking so let's let's break that down so make sure you understand what question is being asked mm -hmm. yeah make mm -hmm. sure you understand what question is being asked and um, one of the worst mistakes you can make is as Ben said before, going off on a tangent, like going off on a different path and forgetting to answer the question or failing to answer the question. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to remind everybody, you know, that IELTS questions are very precisely worded. And this is part of the challenge for me is actually understanding what is what does the examiner want me to say here? So understanding that they're very precise and they therefore, these questions require a really specific answer. So Absolutely. I think, yeah, step one is spend, read the question, but also it's okay to spend a bit of time uh, understanding it, reading it and thinking just what you have to do. Exactly. And this reminds me of one of the modules we have in the sentence guide, which is basically the CTRT method, um, where it's basically cohesive task response method, where we break down the question, we dissect it, and then from there we can make a coherent paragraph plan and it's just so much straight uh, so much easier and this is what i was saying before about breaking it down into the smallest components okay You're, yeah and, and sorry i'm just going to add add that on one ben um this is something that we say to students when you see the question take a pencil and just highlight the key words or circle the key words in that question mm -hmm. um the most common errors we see when we're doing the essay correcting is students who very sadly misunderstood the question. Yeah. And if you misunderstood the question, so if you're if you're not succeeding on that step one of this process, uh, then you are more likely you you won't be able to get a good grade on the task response because you've written a lovely essay but to the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I I remember actually when I was teaching IELTS that this used to be, uh, and also correcting the essays. I saw this day in day out mm -hmm. and the worst is when you get excited and you think you've got it and you race off and you start planning your ideas and you're like oh this is really good and then you review the question again and you're like oh I am <laughs> way off topic and even in yeah. the online classes this would happen so we were always going back to the question two three four five is six times um just to make sure we are completely on topic okay Absolutely. so step two Step two is thinking. Mm. You cannot write an IELTS essay without thinking. So this is part of your brainstorming, your planning, which we talk about a lot on the online course, uh, is just getting ready for this whole writing. So step one, you've read the question, you've understood what you're going to be, what, what you're being asked. Step two is thinking. What are you going to write? So this is when you're going to activate all the ideas you've had. This is when you're going to use all the practice that we're giving you. Uh, when you divide your piece of paper into two, you're going to write down as many ideas as you can for your advantages, for your disadvantages, for your problems, for your possible solutions, depending on what type of essay it is. So you don't react with a ready-made essay. I know mm. quite a lot of students like writing essays in advance and they think, oh, great, I'll just, I'll just use, I'll learn that essay and I'll use that essay again. But I really want to stress this strategy does not work. We would mm. strongly advise against it. You yep. need to think. Yeah, I've heard stories about students. As soon as they see uh, any question, they just reproduce this memorized essay. And it might be about solar energy. And it's, I don't know, just because they, they've memorized an essay about environmental issues. And then they'll reproduce that essay for any question about environmental issues which is basically an absolute train crash 
doing it that. Is. You are you are absolutely right. And when you're doing that little brainstorming stage at the beginning, it, it's three minutes. Honestly, it does not need to take you long. Mm. But you're activating your language. You're activating your experience, your knowledge. You can then transform the examples you're thinking of into academic examples. Your mm. The fragments of language you've learned before, the amazing collocations you've got in your head, all that stuff is working in your brain and this will help you write this fantastic essay. So this step two, think you're going to write, is really, really important in this process. Excellent point there. Yeah. And I'll just um, reiterate what, uh, I'll just repeat what Daphne said there. At this stage, when those phrases pop into your mind, catch them and write them down. And then you can start maybe either bending your essay around those phrases. This one possible way or you start um, bending your language around your ideas there's two ways depending on your ability and this is a podcast uh, a tutorial that we're going to go into later um, but at, depending on your ability you either catch you've got to catch the phrases that come into your mind catch those collocations um, write them down because it's very unlikely that they might reappear. So you've got to get them while they're there. I like Pokemon. That's so true. And actually, the, the, the best essays I read, the ones that are most fluent, so the ones that score really highly on not only lexical resource, obviously, because collocations are all about lexis, but also about coherence, mm -hmm. are the ones that are using these collocations. So these are words which naturally sit together in English. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's very, to an English person, these are instinctive. Uh, mm -hmm. We are very lucky. It's it's normal for us, as it would be in your language. Um, so the collocations that work well are ones that are totally natural. Um, mm -hmm. And as Ben says, write them down quickly because you, then you've got them. You've done the hard work. You've done this thinking. And then when you get into the flow of writing, you can just pick them out and use them. Exactly. Just as a, a very, very quick example, I was reviewing somebody's essay the other day and they wrote about safety and health in the workplace. And I was like, okay, that's all right, but it's more common just to say health and safety in the workplace. Yes. That's the collocation, and it it sounds so much more. It's easier for the listener because the, if you say health and you you're almost expecting safety, but if you say safety and you're never expecting health. So it's just yeah. little things like that to build your your coherence, to build your fluency, and they're also useful for spoken English as well. Okay. And Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, and just as as a as a aside, as a, a suggestion for everybody on that one, the best way you can become more comfortable with these collocations is by listening to the radio or even when you're watching TV, just listening to how people listen, just listening to the words, being aware of the words people are using, mm -hmm. um, because we use these the whole time. Absolutely, great point there. Okay, step three. Okay, so step three is writing the essay okay <laughs> uh, and here i'm thinking of the 12 sentence guide that we use um because i think that's really important that we do that on the course it really helps you if you're not so confident in writing this gives you your stages your process in a way once you started writing mm -hmm. this gives you the little stages to go through to make sure that you're going to cover all the points to make sure that your essay is going to be really organized and coherent so every essay should have three parts so we're going to consider each each part as a step in this process mm -hmm. so your first part is going to be writing the introduction your second part of this writing actual process is going to be your body paragraphs and then your conclusion mm -hmm. um, so we'll go into this in a bit more detail ben yeah yeah totally totally um, yeah, so when you're writing your introduction of, well, hopefully when you've done your planning, you have constantly referred back to the question, okay? Um, and common mistakes when students are doing this is that the position when they're answering is not crystal clear. And exactly. This is a common reason for this is because the student is thinking about maybe the Maybe they've answered the wrong question, which is one thing that we've tried to hammer home for the last uh, 10 minutes. Um, and another reason for this mistake is that they've really gone on sort of like the quality of idea 
rather than the quality of the communication or the quality of the language and this can really really uh, mess up what could be a decent essay absolutely the, the introduction is a really important step in this writing process mm. and i think the the danger i think a lot of or maybe a common error is that students think okay well I'll, I'll just get the introduction done quickly then i'll get into the main point of the essay but the introduction literally introduces the essay it's very important that your introduction is the, like the first impression mm -hmm. imagine you were going into a job interview you want to be wearing your best clothes and you want to be looking really smart and you want to be ready for this interview you want this job mm -hmm. and an introduction is the same thing you are showing the examiner hey this is me this is what i can do i've got this exam absolutely, um, absolutely. you don't want to waste that those few sentences um, yeah. just writing empty sentences um, there's a lot of sentences that people write um, you know this essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages using examples without really giving me anything advantages of my uh, of what or disadvantages of what um, tell me where you're going in this essay literally start guiding me down this path of where your essay is going mm -hmm. so the introduction as part of the writing process that we're talking about it sets the tone and it gives the examiner the first impression of your skills and abilities so mm -hmm. you don't want to get that wrong if you get that wrong you're starting off on the wrong foot as we say absolutely and do you see this phrase whenever i see this phrase i i groan and it's like in today's competitive world that one just drives me crazy <laughs> <laughs> i used to i get when i when i correct essays I, I see this i don't know like at least twice a week and it just drives me mad i'm like ah oh, is where where is this phrase coming from and it seems to just copy paste um so yeah. yeah try and add that element of uniqueness um as well and as daphne said avoid like the plague those empty sentences i used to see those day in day out also okay what's this, the this oh, this God, also sorry. Sorry, this also links back to the thinking because when you've looked at that title and you've read it and you're trying to understand what the examiner wants from you I know we talk about paraphrasing, which is a really important way of uh, showing the examiner different vocabulary, because it's not a good idea to repeat the words in the question. But rather than just choosing a random word that looks the same as the other word, you need to show that you understand that question. We need to know, the examiner needs to know, you really know what you're going to talk about. You're not just paraphrasing empty words. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. I think paraphrase is such a valuable skill. And yeah, maybe we could do a whole, but yeah, we should do another tutorial about that soon, I think, in the mm. future. All right. Yeah. What's the next stage, uh, Daphne? Okay, so the next stage, so you've done your introduction, you're, you've set the tone, you've got a fantastically good impression, you've made your position clear. So this is important. You made your position clear, you agree, you disagree. Uh, and then the next stage, you're going to develop the essay. Mm. So you're going to develop the essay and you're going to, uh, this is your sort of approach to the subject and you're going to give your explanations. So when you're talking about the main body, these two body paragraphs that we talk about, you need to ensure that your answer is clear and accurate and coherent and well-structured. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things you've got to be thinking about in those few sentences. Absolutely. I, and I think this is uh, where the sentence guide comes in because we give you the structure, we give you the formula for this plan. And you can't just read the formula and then write a perfect essay. You do need to test it out a few times. And this is why we offer feedback on the course just to make sure you've got this system mastered before you go and present it yes uh, before you go and do the exam and i'll just mention some um i mean i'm not going to go into detail about how to develop the ideas we've got full tutorials on that uh, mm -hmm. um in the library so in like previous episodes but what we do what i'm going to mention is just some common mistakes that i've seen um where we may have gone into a lot of detail, but we haven't really linked those details to the question. Uh, when I was doing the online classes, I used to see this day in, day out, and there was a disconnect. There'd be like lots of details, maybe about going on holiday or the benefits of going on holiday, whereas the question was, um, should workers take their family with them 
on a work holiday. Yes. And the, I was getting lots of ideas about the details and the benefits of holidays, but it wasn't really answering. And it were, they weren't really directly connected with the question. And another um, common mistake was that the students would come out with ideas related to the question, but they couldn't develop it with examples or they couldn't give reasons. And I think, I, yeah. I think this is a really important exam skill to develop absolutely i completely agree ben and this is something that i say to everybody who's um who i'm working with on the course is give me more um and i know um ellen our colleague is, is also you know she says to students be ambitious come on um mm. you know give me more so yes you've written a great sentence you're absolutely talking about the right topic or whatever it is but explain that to me in more depth don't just give me one sentence and then say for example mm -hmm. i need you to develop it so in the structure of your essay in this process of this paragraph building um mm -hmm. you've got your topic sentence and then you need to develop your topic sentence so in the sentence guide where we use uh, a phrase like this is because this absolutely automatically helps you to give this development, give this extra, because you have to think, oh yeah, okay, why is this? And then you are developing those ideas. This is a really, really important part of this paragraph building. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay, moving on, number five. What's number? What's step number five? By the way, yeah. students, I hope you've, it's a bit late now, but you can always listen to it again. I was gonna say, I hope you're taking notes. So anyway, sorry, step number five. Uh, yeah, we can, we can recap this, Ben. It's okay, we don't have to be too mean to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I, I prefer to be mean, but oh, whatever. <laughs> All right, I'll step, be the nice one. Yeah, um, good cup, bad cup. Sorry, let's go. Step exactly. five. <laughs> okay, so when you've done your step four, you've developed your paragraphs, you've given your examples, you, you, you've got your lovely, coherent, well-structured paragraphs. Step five is going to be your conclusion. Um, so you conclude your essay with a summary. And this is like completing the circle. If you imagine your essay like a process diagram almost that you might see in the academic task one going around in a circle, you, at the end of your circle is your conclusion. And the conclusion should be a summary. Uh, don't give me any new ideas in your conclusion. Mm. Don't throw something at me that about physical health or uh, hospital uh, numbers or something like that, that I'm thinking, where's that come from? You haven't talked about that before in the essay. Why are mm -hmm. you suddenly saying that now? It should be just making sure that you round off your ideas and it should complete it. So mm -hmm. you're just mm -hmm. summarizing the main points that you've made. And you are, as Ben keeps on saying, you're reflecting the connection between you're going back to what you said in the introduction and then back to what you said in the question. So you're making sure that a good conclusion summarizes the content of that essay. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And it takes discipline to ignore these wonderful ideas that pop into your mind at the last minute of writing. <laughs> and they might be a perfect fit and they might be a better quality idea than the ones you've put in your essay, in your body paragraph. Still, it's usually better just to ignore them um, and just stick to the plan because as I keep saying um, almost every episode it's not really the quality of your ideas it's the quality of your communication this is a language exam not uh, a test of your intelligence so yeah absolutely all right yeah. step yeah. six okay step six is the final uh, final step Mm -hmm. Step six, read your essay. Now, I know that you don't have much time. I know this exam, you are under serious pressure to do something fantastic in a very, very short short amount of time. You are nervous, the adrenaline is going crazy. Uh, it is terrifying and we totally understand that. But please, please, please take two minutes at the end to reread your essay. This is the most important thing, very easy to forget. Um, you get one chance doing this exam. You don't want to do it again. It's annoying. It's expensive. It's boring. Um, so read your essay through as you go through it. Just check back on that paragraph you've just done. Am I on the right track here? Because if you're not on the right track, it's better to change it there and then than go all the way to the conclusion and then realize you've written the wrong essay. Mm -hmm. So 
keep rereading, not rereading every word, but keep checking back mm -hmm. uh, to make sure you are on the right track. If you leave this the whole essay till the very end, it might be a bit too late if you've answered the wrong question. Um, but so check it as you're going through and then check it again as a whole at the end and make sure that you have answered the question, make sure your introduction's doing what it should, making sure you've developed your paragraphs and the essay is coherent, that it makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. One final point uh, before we go into the final, uh, well, the practice suggestion that we're going to make in a minute. Uh, one final point is that hopefully or ideally you're getting feedback on your work because this is the fastest way to improve. We do have a feedback service. So if you go to ieltspodcast.com, you can look at the essay correction service. Um, we're so confident of this. We include it in the online course as well. That's why we can offer the guarantee of jump to band seven or it's free. Um, but what I want to say is that getting feedback will enable you to identify your own mistakes and this is insanely valuable because you've probably got no idea of the mistakes you're making, but I mention it now because when you're doing this review of your essay, you need to be looking for mistakes that you have made in your previous essays. Mm -hmm. This way, uh, you're more likely to spot a mistake if you know that, I don't know, um, past participles are a weak spot or a weak area for you, then you know to hone in on those areas and uh, just pay special attention and maybe double double check all the past participles you've used in your essay. This is Absolutely. an easy yeah. way to it, boost it, I, your I, score. I, yeah, sorry, I, I completely agree. I think it's a really, really important point. I think you can write lots of essays and we give you feedback and the feedback is so important and our students really enjoy that uh, really helping them identify errors mm -hmm. but as, again part of this whole process maybe that part of this whole thinking is understanding your errors um so we encourage people to write down their error list and uh we thank you to all the students who take time to do that who really write me a very lovely long list of this is a mistake i made and this is what it should have been or whatever it, but it, as you're doing that you are learning and you are consciously making sure that you won't make that mistake again uh, that mistake is now you've noticed it and if you've noticed it then you're, you're much less likely to do it again absolutely absolutely and just being aware of these mistakes and nipping them in the bud so to mm -hmm. speak will will just make you a better writer overall and very importantly if you catch them now uh they're not going to or they are less likely to become what we call fossilized errors in that they are just part of your this way of writing becomes you become so used to writing like this that it becomes part yes, of your absolutely. everyday no, language in English and the, it becomes much difficult to correct a fossilized error than it is to nip it in the bud before it becomes uh, calcified so to speak exactly, exactly. <laughs> fossilized fossilized errors always make me think of dinosaurs <laughs> exactly yeah exactly <laughs> or, Okay, so the next one, um, practice. How can a student put all what we've said into practice? What's a good exercise a student could do, Daphne? Okay, the, the, the easiest thing for you to do is to take an essay title that you've done before. So don't frighten yourself with a new essay title, but take an essay you've done before and go through these stages. And in a minute, we'll recap on these stages for you. But go through these stages and rewrite the essay. So look at it as if you were looking at it with fresh eyes. Look at that title again. Make sure you absolutely understand those keywords in that title. Make sure you know what is the examiner asking me. And then go through the next stage of the thinking. Go through how you're going to write it. Go through getting ideas for it. Um, so it's not an exercise in correcting errors, but it's almost the opportunity to understand the process and see your whole essay writing in a new light. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why we say use an old essay is because the ideas and the vocabulary are already there, but what you're doing is fine tuning. Um, mm -hmm. So you can really analyze yourself, you know, actually, okay, I thought of that idea, but now I'm just giving myself that stage two brainstorming thinking time. Could I have another idea? Could I make it a bit different? Um, so you're, you're using the ideas 
and the vocabulary that you've got, you're supplementing them, but you're paying attention to how you write that essay, the actual process of doing it, the steps you have to go through to take you from that very beginning, looking at the title to right at the end, checking it and then pressing submit. So it might take a long time, but it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important that you can embed this process into how you write every single essay going forward. So pay attention to each of these phases and then ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve? What are you doing here? Uh, mm -hmm. Why are you doing it like this? Um, so this it's really to do with being very aware Mm -hmm. of what you're doing isn't it and this cognitive process i think yeah absolutely i love this piece of advice of rewriting your old work and i think i think we could and we sh probably should incorporate it into the next uh sentence guide that's going to be launched this year probably in a month or two um but i really like this idea because while, while i was listening to you i was like yeah writing an essay from scratch can be quite a daunting and mentally taxing um, process, whereas rewriting an essay is going to be a lot more fulfilling. It's going to be a lighter mental load, and it's. I think it would be a bit, uh, not a bit more. I think it'd be more enjoyable as well. Don't you think? Yeah, completely. And it's actually very satisfying. I think mm. there's a. It, it, you know, if you think of these stages from start to finish, actually ending up with something that you that is you're really really happy with mm. and that you know is correct in terms of the the grammar or the vocabulary and it's a, got lovely rich vocabulary and you've developed your answers and it's coherent to have that final product mm -hmm. at the end of this process is uh really it's really very satisfying yeah you know you've you know you can do it exactly exactly so what do you think Daphne we should incorporate this into the next online course the next sentence guide I think that's a really, really good idea. I mean, we encourage people to to look at the corrections and rewrite certain paragraphs. But I mm. think rewriting it so that you've got your own model of that essay, um, not that you're going to use that model again, because that's something that we've, we know you can't do. But you've got in there the great bits of language. You know, you've got good paragraphs. Um, you know that I think for your own satisfaction. Exactly. Uh, I think it's a really, really good thing to do. Super, super. Okay, let's, uh, before we finish, let's just review these six stages. So, number one, okay. we make sure we read the question and we understand what the examiner is asking. Exactly. So, number two, think about what you are going to write. Think, this is your brainstorm and your planning. You must think. Beautiful. Step number three, we're going to write the introduction we're going to make sure that um we're answering the question quite clearly and we're not going to uh, sorry we're going to make sure that the question links properly and it's just going to set the right tone and exactly. give a, a stellar first impression good word uh, step <laughs> four we're going to develop the essay ideas into your body paragraphs uh, so your essay ideas your whole um, coherence, the whole um, well, the lovely structure um, is going to come through in those body paragraphs. Super. And step five, we're going to write a summary that ignores any of these ideas that pop into our mind. And basically, we're going to complete this cycle uh, of the essay writing process. Final one, step six, you're going to read your essay. And remember we said, not just read it at the end, keep on checking, keep on checking back after the end of each paragraph. Am I on task? Am I writing the right, am I answering the right question? And make sure you're using the lovely notes you wrote when you were brainstorming. Those yeah. are there, fresh in your mind. They should, you should be keeping, constantly checking on those. So making sure that you, when you, by the end of your essay, when you've read it, it makes sense and it's a coherent whole piece of writing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that's everything from Daphne and myself today. And remember, you're not alone when you're preparing for IELTS. And yeah, just remember, you can reach out to us at ieltspodcast.com. Uh, you can sign up and get a whole big PDF with lots of sample essays and advice and tutorials there. And also remember, when you download the 
podcast app that we have, the IELTS podcast app, um, you get the full transcripts of these tutorials and you get access to more special offers. So have a look at for those in the App Store and the Google Play Store. I think it's something like bwenglishieltspodcast.com and you'll see the logo there, the orange and white one. Download those and then start reading along. Read those transcripts while listening to the uh, while listening to it listening to our tutorial so thank you very much for listening and all the best with your IELTS preparation Daphne do you want anything to add do you want to add anything no. yeah thanks everybody and keep listening to those podcasts they are a really really good way to just make sure you are on top of everything IELTS thanks Ben awesome for listening to IELTSpodcast.com.